got new wheels. Well, new used wheels. But we had a little bit of a problem. This one right here, the bore is smaller. So it does not fit our truck. So right now we are on the way to get the tire dismounted. And then we are going to take the wheel to a machine shop, get the center bore uh, milled out to accept the size of the Dodge wheel hub. Um, I believe this one wheel in particular was a replacement for um, a brake caliper failure that the dude before me had. And so when he ordered the new wheel, it was ordered for a Duramax, which I believe those are a 117 millimeter bore um, versus the Dodges are a 120.9 or 121. Um, one of the two, it's pretty much the same thing. But yeah, so, you know, Got them all on, they were looking good, and now we're back at square one, but that's okay. That's, I mean, you know, that happens when you buy used things, they don't always fit right, but you just gotta, I guess, you know, make it work. So that's what we're doing. So we're gonna go get this thing dismounted and then get it machined. we've made it back from the machine shop and let me tell you that is a very scary process when you have no idea how machining works like me I let me take that back I know how machining works I don't know how to program or actually machine something myself so that is a very terrifying experience when you're looking at a wheel that you just got and you know you have to cut it it's not exciting however it is exciting knowing that your buddy knows what he's doing and he can get it cut for you. With that being said, I got excited and I kind of jumped to it without you guys and got him put on the truck. A lot of that was I needed to make sure that it fit. Um, I could have done that on camera. Obviously, you know, that probably would have been better. But hey, we're still learning here. This is, this is still a learning thing. So I freaking dig it. This, this thing looks, mm, I can't give you the full full scoop yet we got to get this thing cleaned up she's looking a little uh you know a little dingy there so got to get rid of all these water spots get her cleaned up get her looking good but this wheel finally fits so we are in the right direction and i am stoked we had to take 187 thousandths out of the center bore um, to match the factory ram hub bore which i believe I think I told you guys it was 120.9 or something like that. I believe it's actually closer to 121.3. So it, very minimal numbers, but got it where it needs to be. We're all set there. We do scrub and I was afraid of this. Now keep in mind, this is just factory height in the front. I'm not going to show you the back, so I don't want to give all of it away, but we did drop the back two and three quarters of an inch with coil spring specialties and if you haven't seen that video there is a video of us doing that um, and you can kind of get the part number and everything if, if you're looking to do the same thing to your truck these are a 24 by 12 with a 305 35 24 and this is the only spot that we scrub it's very minimal but it's just enough that you can't really get full lock out of it so what we can do to fix that is right here in this crease we can cut this fender flare out. I really, 
I really don't want to do this because I don't want to cut up my truck. I'm not a big fan in cutting to fit tires. Um, I understand there are times where you have to trim. I'm just not a fan of trimming. We could raise the front an inch, a half an inch, but I really like the height that it's at. So I don't want to do that. Um, it doesn't hit the front bumper, the front fender liner anywhere. It's just this one little spot. So with it being so minor, I think I'm okay with cutting. Um, so again, what I think I'm going to do is just try to get a nice sharp razor blade and just, you know, make a nice straight cut line down here. It'll look, you know, just like factory. You'll never even realize that this was supposed to be here. As far as this part, it, like I said, it just barely rubs right in here. There's a pinch weld right behind it that I think, I think I want to try and pull the fender liner out and maybe see if we can't, you know, work that pinch weld back some with maybe a flap disc or something and then just kind of touch it up with some paint so it doesn't rust. I'd like to I'd like to try and push this back if we can or at least give it some wiggle room so that if the tire does hit it it just kind of you know rubs against it and doesn't really necessarily catch it per se. So I think that's what we're going to try to tackle there. So we'll get to all that in this video. Um but first we need to get this thing cleaned up. Actually we need to trim first before we clean it. That would make the most sense, wouldn't it? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to clean a truck and then go cutting on it. Because then, what if you get, you know, debris on the clean parts? Then you got to go back and do it again. So, yeah, we're just going to, we're going to cut first, then clean. So we've got our fender liner out. It's sitting right over here. So basically this is the pinch weld I was talking about right here. To be able to really get to it, we're gonna need to go ahead and make this cut and then we'll have you know plenty of access to get to this. But as you can kind of see, what we wanna do is we'll probably start somewhere up here and just put a tape line in here to know where to stop, but we'll bring it down a little bit and then just take you know maybe, maybe up to a quarter inch out of this we don't want to take too much because this is the pinch weld um, and we don't want to, you know, we don't really want to get into that. We want to leave as much of the pinch weld as possible without compromising it, but we also need to, you know, get it back enough to where the tire or where the fender liner has room to move back and forth. Um, again, this isn't ideal per se, but it does work and it looks clean and you'll never notice that anything has been trimmed or chopped or, you know, anything like that. And that's, that's kind of the goal we're going for is to keep it, keep it looking factory. Um, but we are in desperate need of some new shocks. These things are crusty. Something, something we need to add to the list. We'll, we'll get there on that though, but that's kind of where we're at now. So we're going to get this thing cut up and Start clearancing for uh, these big old guys. So basically I'm thinking if we follow this tape line right here, that'll give us a nice clean straight edge. I don't wanna go too far over to where the washer of the bolt head is sticking over. So it looks like it stops just about right here. If anything, we might need to clean this corner up a little bit, which we can do with some sandpaper. Um, but I think that right there is gonna give us a nice straight clean look. And then we'll just, at the bottom, we'll just kind of come straight across at an angle. I think that'll make it perfect. All right, so we've got our super duper 
Milwaukee precision cutting device utensil thingy. Always make sure you put a new razor blade in it. If you're doing something like this, you want a really nice clean straight cut. That's important. So we got a new blade in here. Let's go cut stuff. Horses are being crazy. All right, here goes nothing. Oh, I don't like doing this. Oh, here we go. No going back now. Actually, you know what? Uh, we can't do that. All right. I was going to try and put a bolt in it to hold the fender liner, but it bolts to the, or the fender flare, but it bolts to the fender liner, so we can't do that. So we're just going to take our sweet time here. Try and get this as close to our tape line as possible. All right, so I left a little extra at the bottom. Um, that way I can kind of peel this back and see, but it looks like realistically, I'm just gonna go straight back. So if we just keep working this nice and easy. You can tell, I mean, I've only driven the truck maybe five times since we put the wheels on. And I've been trying not to hit the fender well, but I mean, you can see it's been scrubbing a fair amount as it was. So either way, that was either going to have to go or it was just going to keep destroying it. So can't be too upset about it, but I think, uh, I think once we have our fender liner back in there, you'll never even be able to tell that that's cut. It should sit pretty flush with the little pocket of the fender liner that bulges out. So here's the part that I really am still contemplating on whether or not I want to do. Again, as I said, it's not ideal to cut the pinch weld. Um, I had an F-250 that I trimmed it way back on to clear some 24 by 14s with 35 13 50s on a leveling kit it worked out really well i never had any issues um but you know it's still still kind of risky i don't like it um because you do have a spot weld right here at the bottom so <sighs> i don't know and my other thought was if i cut this back you know, really we could zip tie the fender wheel back or the fender liner back, but I don't want to do that either because if I do that, then if we ever have to pull the fender liner out, it's one more thing you have to keep up with and it becomes kind of a pain to go in and cut zip ties and then you got to put new ones on and I would rather just keep it as OEM as possible and not cut zip ties, stuff like that. So I don't think I'm going to go that route. Hopefully, you know, it'll give it enough wiggle room to push back worst case scenario we could also take a heat gun and just try to work the plastic back a little bit more um, but if you look right here you can see that pinch weld just barely sticking out and pretty much that's all we're trying to get rid of is just that tiny little bit sticking out which again is probably no more than a quarter inch um, so I think what I'm gonna do now is try and tape the pinch weld from that angle basically just have a tape line on the inside so that I know when I need to stop with the grinder and not go too far with it. And then we can put our fender well, fender liner. I don't, I don't know why I keep calling it fender well, fender liner back in our fender well and see if we're scrubbing or not. And then we'll just match the other side and we should be good to go. So let's get to cutting. All right, got our safety squints on, and we need to turn the wheel to give us more room because I don't want to catch the wheel and get stuck and end up hitting this. But also, just in case, we're going to take some preliminary precautions here because I don't have the Monaco Red 
replacement paint money. All right, so that's got us just about lined up with the fender liner. Um, we didn't actually have to go back as far as I was thinking we were. I do need to take just a little bit more off right through here, but I think we're, uh, I think we're just about where we need to be. So keep, uh, keep trucking. What's nice is we were able to uh, keep this spot well down here, so I don't think we'll have an issue with it, you know, compromising anything. And that's the nice thing about a flap disc is it gets it pretty smooth, so we don't need to file it down or anything like that. Um, we'll throw some paint on here and let this thing ride. All right, so we've got everything taped up. Also on the back side. Oh, we need to get that little corner. But basically, I don't want to get any overspray on anything, obviously. Um, Usually I would test fit everything, make sure that it all works and fits like it should. But being that I don't really want to go past this pinch weld or this spot weld right here, I want to try to preserve that because that's really the only thing down here holding this little corner together. So I don't want to compromise that. So this is about as far as we can go. Um, we're just going to have to live with it either way. But yeah, so we're going to go ahead and hit it with some primer and you know get it nice and good looking there and then we'll just you know hit it with a quick light coat of black i don't have any delmonico red or you know a touch-up pin or anything like that plus it's behind the fender liner you're never going to see it um no one's ever going to notice they're not even going to know and i mean it's such a small spot we just we're really just looking to protect it more than we are for any kind of aesthetic look so we're gonna get this little bit touched up with some black paint and go from there. All right, so we've got our primer sprayed. If it'll uh, focus here. There we go. It's looking pretty good, pretty good. So we're gonna let that dry and uh, then we'll throw some black on it, which I mean, we don't really have to put black on it, but it might just, I don't know. I just feel like painting things today. And why not paint this beautiful Delmonico red a different color? Just kidding. Like I said, you won't see this. But yeah, so we just need that to hurry up and dry so we can uh, move on to the other side, get this thing knocked out and then get it cleaned up. See how good she looks. I'm excited. So, no rust. Again, not something you'll ever see. Not a big deal, just a little extra protectant um, to keep it from ever rusting out or having any issues later down the road. So this side's done. Um, I'm gonna let this paint dry up a little bit and then we'll do kind of a test turn on the wheel and 
see how close it gets. I still think our biggest issue is going to be right here in our fender liner. Um, as you can see, it's it's uh, had its fair share of rub. And I really don't want to cut this out because then you're going to see what we just did. So I'm thinking maybe we can heat this up and crease these just a little bit in the middle and just kind of fold it in some against that fender liner or against the uh, fender weld back there on that pinch weld. But we'll just have to see as we go. So in the meantime, I get to sit around and watch paint dry again. Yippee. Not really, but it works. And again, you'll never see it. So, I mean, even from right here, I mean, yeah, you know, cause I told you, but, oh, hey, get out of there, little guy. But you would never know, would you? I don't think you'd ever know. I'll forget all about it, so it'll be okay. I think that'll ride. I mean, it's not the best looking thing in the world, but it does give us the clearance we need. And with that being black for the most part, it kind of blends in with the fender liner. Um, we didn't paint this down here because it was already red, but I mean, if you're, if you're really looking at it and you knew what to look for, you'd know it's there, but I mean, it looks a whole lot better than, you know, all this being just hacked out and looking like crap at least it still keeps that factory look for the most part but i don't know there's not a whole lot you can do with these to really work them um, like i said we could heat this up a little bit and now that we've got some wiggle room we could get it to fold back some but i think it'll be fine honestly so now we just gotta do the other side So it still just barely touches, but I think we can fix that with a heat gun. I think we can heat that bottom portion up and just kind of work it back a little bit and we should be okay. But this is much, much better than it was. I mean, now it's just barely grazing it versus before the tire. You know, if you look with this piece in here, it's at, you know, a little something like that. I mean, you can see that's a whole lot more that it was, it, well, let me get it a little bit closer. Yeah, so it sat about like that. You can see that's a whole lot more sticking out that it was eating into. So now with that gone, I mean, unfortunately it gives us this lip right here. But like I said, if we can work this back, you know, kind of something like that maybe, I think that would give us a little more clearance. Um, the other thought I had was this bolt right here actually secures to the fender liner. So we could put a spacer back here behind the actual fender and it would push this back. So I may try that first. Cause like I said, we did have a good bit of room to go back some more. So I may just space this one out on the inside behind there. Um, again, one more thing to keep up with if we have to pull the fender liner, but 
that's pretty easy. Um, it's not really anything to get back there and, you know, put that spacer. So I'm going to see what I have. If I've got a couple washers or something like that, then maybe we could throw behind there to kind of space it out a little bit. I think I've got some spacers. I think I might actually use a turbo pedestal spacer from one of my six O's. I think that would work. I know I have two of those. So that's what we're going to try real quick and see if that makes a difference. So I've got this valve cover bushing spacer, washer, whatever you want to call it from a six O. Um, I'm thinking this might work really well because we can put it in there this way. And hopefully this piece right here can kind of sit in the fender itself um you know and get a nice little solid lock in there and then that space right there should be just enough for what we're looking for so let's see So we had to trim the lip off the end of it because uh, it wouldn't fit through the hole of the fender itself. So hopefully now this will just slide right in and it'll sit, you know, like this. Provide a nice cushion between the fender liner and the uh, fender itself. So let's see how this one fits. All right, so it is gonna fit in there, so that's a plus. Now we just gotta get it in there just right. Can't tell from here, but that might work. And then if we have to heat it up and bend it back that way a little bit, we can. But I don't know that that'll be necessary, but we'll see here in just a second. All right, well that was full lock and it looked like it still had half an inch. So I, I think we might be golden, man. This, that worked out great and it looks good. You can't really even tell anything was done at all other than, you know, like I said, you can tell right here it was cut. Not a big fan of that little bit that sticks out, but I mean, I could go back and clean it up, but at this, uh, yeah, maybe one day I'll go back in and just kind of file it down a little bit. But for right now, I'm pretty happy with that. And the fact that it doesn't scrub at all, I think that gave us exactly how much room we needed. So shout out to six cover valve cover. Shout out to six O valve cover bolts. They came in clutch on that one. So now we just need to uh, duplicate this side. And I don't remember what I did. So we may do it different. I don't know, we'll see. Check this out. From me sitting here turning it back and forth, where this side was scrubbing, it broke the, let's see if I can get you in here. It broke the top little tab off of that anyways. So it also looks like it, I can't tell if that's a crack or a seam. It looks like it might just be a seam from where it was molded. Yeah, it is, it's just a seam. Okay, so same thing on this side. We'll just cut it right here and it'll be good to go. And then, like I said, we'll work our inner liner just like we did on the other side, get that spacer in there. And I think we, uh, I think we might have found the uh, meal ticket on this one or the recipe as you 
might want to call it. So let's get it knocked out. officially have both sides trimmed both sides cut painted all the way back together everything's good no more scrub it looks good as long as it just doesn't catch that edge right there which i don't think it will we got another spacer down in there so we're we're looking good and i think we've uh think we have fixed our scrubbing issue so and it still looks uh factory you can't really even tell but i mean we've got you know a good amount of room over here so and this was the side that was scrubbing worse so i think i think we're gonna be all right but yeah so now we just need to get this thing cleaned up and see how shiny everything is but i like it it is clean now we got everything done on it i just hit it with some spray wax because i washed it last week so he's got smokers okay. all in it he got Liar. jealous. He got jealous that we were over here doing things. <laughs> so he decided to show up. Yeah. What are you doing? Stuff. Stuff? I can't see the other part to do that. This thing looks like shit under here. Yeah, this thing's raggedy. Oh, man. Wait for it to blow up. Maybe that'll happen at Fitzgerald's performance event. Let's let it happen when we get home. Why? Because oh, I'd am like to get home. Oh, we could fly home. <laughs> That'd be the best place for it to happen because then you can just leave it there. Yeah. $8,000 transmission. Here I go. Okay. I need to get to the other side now. Do you know what you're doing? No. Not at all. Okay. Matt, you should watch this thing. all this crap out here when you stop bringing your junk over here for me to fix you didn't fix this i fixed it this time it doesn't look fixed to me no i haven't got to that yet 
All right, well, we no longer scrub. So the, the idea that I had, our little recipe worked. So if you're, uh, if you're scrubbing right here, you know, there's, there's a trick for you. You can try that. Now, I don't feel like I should have to say this, but I'm going to say this. Cut your truck at your own risk. Don't follow my advice. Cause you could end up like Matt. We don't want to be like Matt. I didn't cut this. I NorCal modded it and it worked fine. It still scrubs? It's not scrubbing where I NorCal modded it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, that's going to wrap up today's video. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, like and subscribe and hopefully we'll see you next time. <laughs> What'd you say? You got something to say, Matt? Yeah, you said you wanted dick pics.